Hi everyone! If you're new here, I'm Alan with Earth Glow, and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. So today's video is a follow-up on the testing, the wax testing that I have done with Soy 10, also known as, I believe, AccuSoy or AccuBlend um, Soy 10. So I have tested this wax over the course of the last month or so, and this video is going to outline my process for testing the wax, how I went about it, um, a little overview making the test candles, burning the test candles, the results of all the test candles, and in the end what I think of the wax, um, and the pros and the cons, um, in my opinion, of Soy 10. And so anyways, if this is something that you're interested in, then consider subscribing. I am always posting candle business related content. And wax videos are something that, um, usually I finish that sentence with saying fragrance videos are my absolute favorite to film, but wax videos are something that, um, it's kind of newer to me. Um, I really only worked with 464 soy, beeswax, and coconut, um, adding coconut oil in some combination with those other two, um, waxes. So, but I did want to branch out a little bit and try some of your favorite waxes. So anyways, if this kind of video is something that you're interested in, then I hope that you're subscribed and I hope that you keep on watching. I'd like to start this video off by saying that I decided to try Soy 10 primarily because um, as a 464 user for, gosh, like the last four or five years, um, I've used, um, well, I'd say I've used 464 for three or four years. Um, I actually started with beeswax and I will um, link my other video above as to why I formulated my own wax blend. Um, so that way you can kind of get more details on my history that I, I don't want to uh, kind of start from scratch with in this video because this video specifically is just about my review of Soy 10. Um, what I think of it, the pros and cons, etc. Um, and so yeah, I wanted to try this wax out because a lot of you use it and also because Erica from Memory Box Candle Co. uses Soy 10 and I've always loved Erica's channel. Um, I think that she's a fabulous teacher and um, I think that her content is just extremely valuable. I love her transparency and I could say a lot of good things about her. Um, Erica. So I really just wanted to try the wax out that she loves and uses. And so I did order from Cal Candle Supply and the wax I got um, came in this 11 pound slab. And um, I also did an unboxing um, of this slab that I have here. But yeah, so let's get right into, I want to just put up some clips of the testing and then I'm gonna come back after the testing is over and talk about the pros and the cons of the wax and will I be switching to it? What do I think of it, etc. But right now, just relax, enjoy your coffee or um, whatever you're having to drink while you're watching this video. Comment down below, like, what do you do when you watch my videos? Do you make candles? Do you like sit and relax? I'm, I'm curious what you all are doing when you're watching my content. Um, but anyways, whatever that may be, uh, sit back, relax, and let's go back in the past a couple of weeks to when I first uh, started working with Soy 10 and the test candles that I made. So the way that I started this project was I decided I was going to use the wooden wicks as well as some Eco Ones and the CD wick series. So I actually made a total of I think 12 candles. Um, I started out with nine, or no, 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 I started out with six. And I did three at 10% and these three are at 12% fragrance just to see um, if it would actually hold 12% like it says. And then for wicks, I did double wick with the Eco Ones as well as use the wooden wicks in the 0 .03 series, 0.5 inch, and then I used the CD wicks as well. Um, the CD14 is what I started with. Um, so I'm just getting out the wax here and the way that I usually like to start um, when I have tried new waxes is just by like feeling the texture kind of seeing what I'm working with. And this wax was extremely buttery and creamy. And I was sort of delighted uh, by feeling the texture of it. It actually reminded me of coconut oil. Wow, this stuff feels like butter. This really, really reminds me of coconut wax. Um, wow. 
super, super smooth. Um, it is a lot softer than what I'm used to working with, I think. Um, maybe not though, because I honestly don't know how 464 would be um, if it was in a slab form, because it comes in those flakes. So I'm gonna be doing, um, in this first one, 22 ounces of wax. And this is gonna be for my 10% um, candles. And then I'm gonna do another picture after this with 12% wax, or with 12% with fragrance. Um, so I'll do that one separately. Yikes! So this is after just seven or ten minutes of burning this one um, with a suggested wick, the 0 .03 series, um, 0.5 inch uh, width um, from Maxi, And that is just a starting point, so I'm definitely gonna try wicking this down one size within the series. So I'm gonna try instead of the 0.5 inch width, I'm gonna try wicking this down to the 0.375 inch width. 
and uh, I'm gonna just extract this wick and um, see how that one works. Actually what I decided to try was just a single ply wick. Um, so I'm gonna keep the width the same, but I'm gonna just try a single ply from the same wick series and see if that helps because it was clearly very over wicked. Um, even though that was the starting recommendation. It's just a starting point. Okay, and so I'm gonna just cut this one and then wait for the wax to harden and then I will try to light this again. I still think that the flame is just too active for me um, with this wick. This is the 0 .03, um, 5, 0.05 inch width. So I'm gonna try the 0 .04 because this is 100% soy. Um, I feel like this series might be better. Um, so I'm gonna try the 0.5 inch crackling booster wick, wick <laughs> in the 0 0.04 series. All right, so we are now three hours and 20 minutes into the burn, the first burn on this one. And I did change this out to a 0 0.04 series, 0 0.5 inch crackling booster. And it's doing much better than the 0 0.03, which it just pretty much tore right through. And the scent throw is really good. It's filling up the crystal room and candle room. Um, and that's kind of a medium sized room, which is pretty good for a six ounce candle, I think. All right, so this mahogany and teak wood with two Eco Ones has been going for several hours, and uh, this is first burn on this guy. Pretty nice job of filling um, this open kitchen area. Not super strong, but definitely prominent scent throw. Um, and these are, again, the two Eco Ones and 100% soy 10. So I lit this one. This is the 100% um, soy 10 with the 10% mahogany and teak wood and the 0 .03 series, 0 0.5 inch crackling booster. And it's only been lit for about an hour and we are close to a full melt pool. So I would probably consider this one over wicked, but I'm gonna just do it for another hour and um, kind of see how this one does. Um, I might go down a size, so to the 0.375. Um, and, but let's just let this one go for another hour and see. So this is the one that I changed to the 0 0.04 series. And this one, um, is the 0.5 inch width as well. And this is about after two hours on the second or third burn. Um, and I would consider this flame too high for my comfort. So um, probably not the wick choice I would wanna make for this uh, wax and this size vessel. So this 0 0.03 series five inch uh, crackling booster is surprising me. We are now three hours in. I'm very happy with the flame and it's burning very cleanly. Um, it's just not quite a full melt pool, but it's still pretty high up in the jar, or in the tin rather. Um, so I'm very pleased with this one so far, and I will keep you all updated. Okay, so now I lit the same 0 .03 series, 0.5 inch um, width wood wick, um, and the flame is very, very high. So it solidified um, for about half a day, and then I uh, trimmed the wick and relit it. So it could have been that I didn't trim the wick far enough, so what I'm gonna do is blow it out and uh, let it cool down, trim the wick, let it re-solidify, and then relight it. And here's the same candle. Let's see if the lighting will adjust here. There we go. Um, after just trimming the wick a little bit more, and um, so just to show with those wood wicks, um, it can be quite a big difference if you just trim the wick a little bit more. Um, it doesn't always happen like that, but when they light and it's like a forest fire, um, which occasionally happens with, it seems like a lot of these wood wicks, um, you can just blow it out, trim the wick down a bit more, and then you have this. Okay, so it's the next day and I just lit this candle again, the um, 0 0.03 series with the five, uh, 0.5 inch crackling booster and um, I did break off the burn bits of the wick prior, and I don't know if you can see, but there are like little wisps of soot coming off of this candle, and 
I am just not happy um, overall with the wicking. If you do cut the wick um, with a wick trimmer, um, pretty short prior to burning, then you're not gonna get this, but a lot of people don't do that, and you should be able to just break off the burn bits of the wick. At least that's my philosophy, so I would not, um, you know, sell this um, with the .03 series, .5 inch crackling booster, and you can see the flame is higher than I would like anyways, um, as well. So, yeah, I would probably go down a size, um, and I may do that and test um, with the 0.375 inch instead of the 0.5 inch crackling so booster. So I just wanted to record, I'm so thrilled with this one. This is the 0.3 um, series, uh, 0.5 inch width, and this is with 10% mahogany and teak wood from the flaming candle. And this is soy 10 with um, about 3% beeswax. This is about an hour into the burn, but um, it's not nearly at a full melt pool. There's still quite a ways on the edges, but I'm just loving this flame and this scent throw. I mean, we're in my bedroom right now. I didn't really prepare to have it on film, but it's like filling this whole room. Um, and, oh, I'm thrilled. I am thrilled. So we are right at the three hour mark on the first burn with this 10%. Um, so this is 10% mahogany and teak wood by the Flamey Candle with the point uh, 0.03 series, 0.5 inch width crackling booster um, by Macy. And the flame is just so perfect. This is the first burn. Now the wood wicks can be a bit erratic, so it could be totally different the next time I burn it. But so far I am thrilled with this for the eight ounce tins. Um, this is the 3% beeswax again with the um, soy 10. Um, oh my goodness, the scent throw is phenomenal too. All right, so startlingly, here is the same candle. Um, after the wax had re-solidified, I lit it a second time. So this is, again, the one that is soy 10 that has 3% beeswax. It's the 0.3 series crackling booster with the 0.5 inch um, the half inch crackling booster wick and 10% fragrance of the mahogany and teak wood. Flame's just too high, it's sooting, it's burning like a forest fire, and I'm so frustrated. These wicks, um, they seem very unpredictable, and I've found this in the past with the wooden wicks. Um, you know, if I blew this out and trimmed it down really short, it'd probably be just fine. But the thing of it is, is my consumer even if I educate them, I can't be guaranteed that they will actually do that. And so I just wouldn't be comfortable selling something like this. Um, I guess what I would do next is test it with the 0.375 inch um, in the same series, um, or maybe try the 0.4 series and the 0.375 inch. But the, the caveat is that you may not get the fragrance throw that you're looking for. So I may test that out in the future um, with these and I'll keep you all updated, but yeah. Unfortunately, really frustrated at this. So here is my tester with 100% soy 10, 10% um, mahogany and teak wood with the CD 14. This is after three hours on the first burn. And although it looks pretty good on camera, the flame actually, I don't know if you could just see that, it's sooting a little bit. You see that? How it's, you can't really see the soot, I don't think, over the camera, but it is, there are wisps of soot that are um, happening with this one and I would consider this not the right wick size because I'm only on the first burn and um, three hours in and yeah it's it's not quite a full melt pool but the way that the wick is sitting like that I would go down a size um, so probably a CD 12 would be what I would do with this one um, for the 8 ounce tin. And just one more thing I wanted to add here. So I did change out the wick to a 0.375 inch, and I think this is pretty ideal in terms of the flame. So I guess that would probably be my choice for this vessel would be the point, um, oops, I think I have 0.3. It's, I think it's called the 0.03 series with the 0.375 inch crackling booster. This blend is the soy 10 with about 3% beeswax and it has 10% fragrance load. So, you know, I could burn this a couple more times um, and I probably will do that, but this would be my best choice um, at this point. I just definitely would want a product that I feel like would be safest for the general consumer. And um, even though they're supposed to trim their wicks, 
I always like to test the product so that if they don't, that it's not gonna be really dangerous for their house. So I now want to take you all back into the present and this is about, I guess, three or four weeks later. And I just wanna to talk to you all about some of the pros and cons of Soy 10, in my opinion. And please, as I always say, do your own testing. This is just my opinion. Um, I think some of the pros of this wax is that it is extremely um, beautiful. It's very creamy, opaque, it has a, I would say better uh, hot throw than 464, but it does not have as, as good of a cold throw as 464. And, and I'm comparing it to what I've used most of. Um, so you're gonna hear me talking about 464 a lot because that's the main soy wax that I use. It's just about as unpredictable with the wooden wicks as 464 soy, which is why, one of the reasons why I developed my own recipe for um, making wooden wick candles. Um, I blend beeswax soy and cocoa cream, and um, I will try to link that recipe above if any of you are interested in it. It's free and available to all of you, but my wax blend also has its pros and cons and it's not all pros um, by any means. So you always have to just weigh that out with whatever you're using. But yeah, it's a beautiful wax. It has a great hot throw. I would say um, it has as good or better hot throw than my beeswax soy and cocoa cream candles. Um, so those are like the main pros that I can say. Oh, also it's a very easy wax to work with. The jar adhesion is excellent. Um, I didn't have to do anything once the candles were made. I didn't have to heat gun them. Um, no sinkholes. Um, nothing like that. I can't talk about wet spots because I did use opaque jars. But yeah, as far as all the other things go, uh, sinkholes, all that stuff, this wax was a breeze. Um, basically my process was um, just as the manufacturer's instructions um, suggested, I heated the wax up to about 200, 210 ish. And then I added my fragrance oil right about um, 200, 195, and then stirred for 30 seconds and poured immediately. So that's kind of what um, the manufacturer recommends for that wax. And it, it produced excellent, excellent jars adhesion and excellent smooth creamy opaque finishes right away I had absolutely no issues uh, working with it so I think it's a great beginner wax so now for some of the cons I would say of soy 10 I never really um, got the consistency that I wanted to with the wooden wicks the best that I have was um, I don't know if you can see it in the background but it is the point 03 series the 0.375 inch crackling booster with um, actually it's uh, 20 or it's uh, got 3% beeswax added to the soy 10 um, and 10% fragrance load the fragrance load didn't make a significant difference um, oh I also did want to say that I, I um, tested it up to 12% so I tested some of my test candles at 12% just because that the soy 10 is supposed to be able to hold 12% fragrance and it definitely held 12% fragrance there were no issues there um, as you saw in my footage but um, yeah so kind of issues with the wooden wicks and the consistency but 464 is the same way really um, one minute you have a beautiful flame the next time you light it even after trimming the wick properly you have a forest fire um, it, it can be very unpredictable um, and I think still the most predictable thing uh, for the wooden wicks for in my personal experience is the wax blend that um, I have uh, come up with, but I am gonna be trying Makesies, um, some of their wax blends, because I feel like those may work um, ultimately the best since they are, you know, the, the one with the patent and the trademark on the wooden wicks. Um, but anyways, yeah, so that's one of the cons. Uh, another one of the cons is just with the manufacturer, I feel like I, I was doing a lot of reading and trying to figure out um, just with, with some issues with transparency um, in the manufacturer of that company. Um, I know that they said that they didn't have paraffin, but then it looks like there may be a small amount of food grade paraffin in the candles, but they advertise them to be 100% soy. It looked like the company may have been rebranded at some point, like the management may have changed um, a little bit, and that could have been some of the issues with some of the transparency there. I really don't have a clear answer to that, but I mean, it's basically 100% soy from what I read, and um, you know, there could be trace amounts of ingredients in a lot of things, so I wouldn't uh, concern yourself too much with that um, if you're thinking about using this wax but um, yeah I, I'm definitely still considering it um, for my line um, I really wish the wooden wood performance were more consistent that that really was a letdown um, another letdown is that it does have a sort of odor to it that I don't really find all that pleasing it kind of smells um, I mean I guess like soy 
but it, it sort of, <laughs> it has like a, a lotion odor or something to it, but, but not really a good one. I wouldn't say that it's off-putting. I've actually smelled some beeswaxes that are really off-putting. I wouldn't call this off-putting, but yeah, slight aroma to it that isn't quite as neutral as I might like. Another con to it, um, I would say, is that it, it does, like if you, um, with my beeswax soy and cocoa cream wax blend, you can get away with touching the surface a lot more than you can with these Soy 10 candles. Um, the surface does get pretty sticky pretty fast if you <laughs> kind of touch it a little bit or if there's something that gets on there. Um, but you know, you can always just heat gun over if you get a fingerprint on the candle, etc. So I, I think that the cons in general on this wax are pretty small. I think that the price point is really good. I think that it's definitely could be a luxury marketed wax. And I may have another update for you all later, or I may not. Um, but anyways, I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you do use Soy 10, leave me a comment down below. And if there's anything else that you think that this video is missing, um, that you'd like to share about Soy 10, definitely leave it in the comments. But anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave it a thumbs up if you did enjoy. I'm sending everyone peace, love, and light, and I'm wishing all of you happy candle making.